Hello again. And in this video, we're going to look at Archimedes' principle. Archimedes' principle has to do with a buoyant force. And what a buoyant force is, if you think about something floating um, in water, say, say you have a swimming pool and you have an object you throw in the pool. And basically, the weight of the object is a force pulling down. The buoyant force is a force pushing back up on it. Like if you take a, one of those noodles or an air thing, you hold underwater, it's pushed back up and it juts up. In other words, that buoyant force is what's pushing it up. But Archimedes' principle defines that buoyant force. Archimedes' principle states this the buoyant force acting on an object fully or partially submerged in a fluid is equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. In other words, if you have an object floating in a fluid, we'll say the fluid is water again, and this object is a styrofoam brick or something like that, and, or even a ship, we'll call it a ship, it's a rectangular ship, and the ship is displacing a certain amount of water. Basically, the force of weight is pulling down. The weight of that water is the magnitude or the numerical value of the buoyant force pushing back up on the ship. This is why an aircraft carrier floats in water, or a penny will sink to the bottom, because it's not just the weight of the object, it's how much water is displacing. An aircraft carrier displaces a heck of a lot of water. The weight of all the water it's displacing is a buoyant force pushing back up on the aircraft carrier. That's why it floats rather than sinks. But we're going to talk about the three scenarios as to how that changes. <clears throat> so Archimedes' principle clearly defined here. Now you have three possibilities when comparing two forces. And we're comparing the, the force of weight and the buoyant force. Either the weight's greater than the buoyant force, the weight's equal to the buoyant force, or the weight of the object is less than the buoyant force. If the weight is greater than the buoyant force, quite simply put, the object sinks. Right now, where you're sitting and where I'm standing, we're st sitting or standing in a sea of air. We're displacing a certain amount of air being where we're at. The weight of the air is pushing up on us right now. My weight is greater than the weight of the air I'm displacing. Same with you, or else we'd be floating. If the ship takes on water, it increases its weight. The buoyant force doesn't change. If the weight is increased so much to where the weight is greater than the buoyant force, then the, the ship will sink. Now, if the weight is equal to the buoyant force, the, the object, in this case a ship, will float within the fluid. In other words, a ship is usually partially submerged. Part of it is underwater, part of it is above water. That's a perfect example of where the weight of the object is equal to the buoyant force. And lastly, if the weight is less than the buoyant force, the object floats on top of the fluid. Think of a ping pong ball in water. A ping pong ball doesn't break the surface tension of the water, it floats completely on top of it. So therefore, that's an example of an object whose weight is less than the buoyant force of what is displacing. To wrap all these in one, think of a balloon. Say, for instance, one of those mylar balloons filled with helium. You're at a birthday party, you bring it home. You release in your room, goes to the top of the room. That's the case when the weight is less than the buoyant force and the object, the balloon, goes as high up as possible, floating on top of the fluid. When some of the helium escapes and is replaced by air, the balloon starts to gain weight. So what happens is it eventually becomes equal to the buoyant force, kind of floats within the room. You'll hit it, it'll go up a little bit, come back down, and so forth. Then eventually, the balloon, most of the helium's gone, replaced with air, replaced with um, heavier gases, and the weight becomes greater than the buoyant force, so the object sinks to the bottom of the room. Perfect example of one object that can display all three properties, but that object is changing. Same thing with a boat. A boat can display very little water, I'm sorry, a lot of water, but have light weight, floats on top, it gains weight, it's partially submerged, it gains too much weight, it sinks. So that's a good indication of how you can use Archimedes' principle.